Hi, today we're going to talk about LPG systems. This is liquid petroleum gas injection for cars. Makes running a big engine car a lot cheaper, but it's not without its maintenance issues. So I've uh, run this car on LPG for probably getting on for about 10 years. And uh, I'd like to pass on some of my tips on how to maintain it, how to fix problems. So some of the issues, um, the injectors, press start over here. This, by the way, is an OMVL system, a Dream 21N. Uh, the injectors can gum up. Uh, you get waxy deposits inside the LPG gas tank that can get transferred through to the rest of the system. Should be filtered out by filter here and a filter here. Uh, but eventually some can get through to the injectors. Uh, these are basically solenoids. So this outer black box is just a coil. It's normally a circle up on the top. I tend to leave them off to make it easier to get to the solenoids and then these will just pop off. So these are hollow steel tubes and inside here is a lump of iron on a spring. Uh, this whole plate easily comes off with four Phillips screws. Make sure the screwdriver fits nice and tightly, got the right type and you'll be able to unscrew those without too much of a problem uh, as long as you get a good grip on them. And inside we look at perhaps the service kit for those um, injectors. Here we are. These are the little springs. Here we just get a bit closer. Here we are. These are the little springs that go on the metal lumps inside those tubes. Uh, so the solenoid being a coil, it's activated with current, pulls up the metal lump and opens the valve. At the bottom of this spring, as you can see there, is a tiny little uh, uh, rubber o-ring and that basically dampens the tube or rather dampens the uh, iron weight when it hits the end of the tube stops it bouncing around too much. Over time these can get a bit flat and a bit squashed and as well as the uh, spring getting waxed up uh, you might also find the spring starts to get uh, worn or, or could even break. Uh, you can get these repair kits uh, quite cheaply and um, the most important thing out of those is the little rubber o-rings that's good to replace. Uh, you'll notice that uh, you've got problems if they're making a lot of noise and perhaps not injecting properly. To test it, you can run the engine and just pop off one of these uh, solenoids one at a time uh, while the engine is running and you should see an equal um, decrease in the engine idle speed. Uh, if you don't, it means that injector is not injecting gas very evenly or even not at all. So that's a good way of uh, finding out where your problem lies. Uh, the other quite common problem is the vaporizer or pressure reducer. Uh, again, this is a Dream 21N uh, unit, uh, quite it's the high horsepower version. Uh, what can happen very commonly is the diaphragm inside this first pressure reducer can uh, age and harden up, get affected by the LPG gas, and you will then find your engine's not running very well. If you're lucky enough to have an air fuel ratio meter, like one of these inside the car, then that will tell you that your engine is running too rich when it's idling. And the very common reason for that is because this diaphragm has perforated, letting gas straight out into your inlet manifold via this vacuum pipe that is normally attached onto the end here just to activate the diaphragm. And if you put a little bit of spittle on the end of your finger, hold it over the end, you'll see gas will be bubbling out of here, which shows that the diaphragm has indeed ruptured. You probably smell a little bit of, it, of um, gas as well. Um, so you can undo this with it in situ. It's partly undone at the moment, this one. Um, so I'll just take off the last nut. And then inside, you will see these two springs. There's a plate at the bottom. And this one has two springs. That pushes onto this rubber diaphragm here. Let's see if we can get a better picture. There we go. So as you can see, this moves in and out. Uh, this is a hard plastic piece held on by a spring and a nut. Rubber diaphragm is the actual bit around here. And uh, to remove it, you have to get a hex key, a uh, set of one of these metric, metric hex keys is probably best. And you insert the hex key into the hole at the end, into there, like so. Get, I think, a 14mm spanner to undo that nut. Then you'll be able to take the spring, the plastic uh, part, flat circular plastic piece off. And indeed the diaphragm. And the diaphragm looks something like, if we look at some of the old ones, and here over here is a repair kit. It's 
so yeah here's one of the old ones let's get into a bit of light here we go uh, so you can see on this one that the rubber started to crack there we go a few places and eventually it perforates and lets the gas through and a bit of a design error which I don't like in these is there's end stops which actually pushes onto the rubber and also contributes towards actually making a hole in the rubber eventually uh, there's another old one somewhere yeah sometimes you can actually find that the edge perforates as well um, yeah, here we are, it's cracked quite badly uh, these are a couple of other ones so I've replaced uh, in the past it's the normal thing that goes uh, you can buy a kit, a repair kit for about £20 which contains a lot of gaskets if you really want to strip the whole thing down then you could uh, change a lot more than you strictly need to um, the second diaphragm hardly ever seems to have too much of a problem with it I think that's an old one that uh, doesn't look too bad at all so it's, first, it's that first high pressure reducing uh, gasket that normally goes uh, so it's possible and reasonably straightforward to replace the only pain in the arse is getting the, uh, the lid back on again um, because of these springs uh, it's a, quite a push to actually push uh, this cover back on uh, by the way you have to be careful when you're removing it as well of course try and undo the screws uh, evenly uh, push it in if you can because uh, what happens as you let's just do that as you push in you can see let's see if we can get in there yeah as you push in or as the springs push in well you can see it might just see that the rubber tends to bend up at the edges and what can happen especially if the lid is on a little bit skewed is the rubber can bend over and you don't get a very good seal a little trick that i've used in the past is to put a tiny little smear of super glue around the metal edge and then just it's just enough to stick the rubber down just around the edges it stops it curling up when you're pushing it back on so uh, we'll do that and then uh, try and get the lid back on all right so we'll attempt to spread a little bit of super glue Oh, very thinly around the edge, like so. Now, it won't be a very uh, permanent fix because what seems to happen is the propane gas seems to dissolve away super glue. Because I've actually tried um, repairing these rubber diaphragms in the past and uh, you tend to by sticking on with super glue extra bits of rubber and you do find that um, the gas actually dissolves away the super glue hopefully that'll be just enough super glue to hold that rubber in place while the spring is pushing down on it just need to add a little bit more in a couple of places where it is indeed bending up right now when we push in you don't get so much bending up around the edges very tiny little bit in a few places but not enough that it's going to actually kink the rubber and break the seal you then put the screw and nut retainer on and for that need to get the hex key back in position just to stop that central shaft rotating and do up the nuts with a 14 mil spanner I do that up do it all the way up till it's tight just hand tight and then we need to put on the end cap with these springs make sure that plate is positioned correctly at the bottom the inner spring goes around the uh, recessed or standing up part of the plate like so uh, so it would be easier if the whole evaporator reducer was off and on the bench of course with it laying more horizontally it does make it a little bit more difficult to get this end cap on uh, to make sure everything lines up correctly with it vertical uh, it is possible just about now uh, what you have to do is make sure that the spring 
is uh, correctly sitting around that recess. We'll give it a little tilt just to check that. And similarly, uh, this end plate side, you have to squash it a little bit and just make sure that, that spring is centralised, which it is. Uh, so then, you could either ask somebody to push it for you, or if you're strong enough, you probably could just push it in by hand while loosely doing up some of the nuts. Let's just see if we can do that. Okay, a few turns should be enough. Another one on the other side. Yeah, it's quite a force is required to push in this lid, so you have to have quite strong hands. Uh, once you've got a few threads of the nut on, then uh, of course you can just release the pressure, screw it in by your hex key. Uh, need to screw it in evenly of course as well. I think that's taken. There we go, let's just do a few more on that top one. Yeah, that's good enough. So then you can peer in and make sure that rubber is not kinking up too much. And then it's going to go down flat when finally it's actually compressed on. I think if we do it evenly that should be fine. Let's get some more of the little bolts on. Now here it's actually useful to uh, undo the gas supply pipe normal copper fitting it just gives you a little bit more room in here now, I'm not terribly sure how long these rubber diaphragms last but uh, probably something like at least every two years or so you have to replace them not too expensive you could take it to your LPG shop or you can have a go at doing it yourself that's well, what you can do, of course. Is just push it in a little bit by hand. Do it finger tight. It's quite a little bit quicker. And using the hex key. I uh, did experiment, as you can see here, trying to use a valve spring compressor. Probably is possible, but uh, didn't actually make it any easier. So I ended up not using that to push down the lid in the end. Right, that's the lid all tightened off evenly all the way around. Then we've just got to reconnect our gas pipe. And the vacuum pipe down the bottom, which brings us on to another common area of failure, which is rubber pipes, of course, which over time perish and split with age. Quite a lot of this rubber pipe section I've changed with uh, silicon hose, which does last longer. It goes all the way back to the inlet manifold. So if you do find that the rubber diaphragm has kinked inside while you're putting the lid on, uh, it'll be pretty obvious because when you start the car and it switches over to gas, then the gas will all start leaking out around this diaphragm edge with a bit of a hissing noise. Pretty unmistakable. Uh, so you just have to take it off super glued down that kinked edge stop it coming up again and uh, then do it up again uh, if you really want to be safe and check that you haven't got any gas leaks anywhere then what one thing you can do is get a solution of water and washing up liquid detergent uh, swish it round get a nice lot of foam take a handful of that foam put it all round the joints you want to check for leaks and uh, if you've got any gas leaks, then you'll see the foam will bubble up. That's a good way to spot any tiny little leaks. Like so. And actually, it's quite a useful test because it shows a little leak for the bit we haven't disturbed, which is the bolt on the end. So it's quite a useful thing to do, this washing up liquid test. So 
we'll take that bolt off and uh, maybe uh, check the O-rings or something. Check all the other joints while we're at it. Everything else I think is fine. Okay, so there was a little leak from this bolt at the end. We've undone it and indeed it's got a little rubber o-ring that fortunately comes in the repair kit so I'll whip that off and change it and test it again okay that's the o-ring changed and then we'll do the bubble test again and this time no leaks which is good um so that should be the uh, vaporizer now uh, fully working again um, did I mention one thing I did on the injectors to make them a bit more uh, reliable and to stop them from uh, gumming up with wax is because uh, normally they were fitted uh, at a position which gives them a uh, cooler temperature than perhaps the vaporizer so what can happen is the gas, if it carries some wax down into the injectors, the wax can start to solidify and then stop the injectors working. So to get around that, I actually fed a uh, or fed the water supply that normally goes to the uh, vaporizer. So here's the water supply route. It actually goes underneath the injectors and I've got a bit of uh, half inch uh, copper tube, plumbing tube underneath. So that actually warms up the injector block, stops the wax solidifying and uh, seems to make the injectors last longer and stop them from uh, gumming up. And I've done the same on the other side on this uh, V8 engine. So as a useful little tip, I uh, need to fairly regularly change the filters. And the only other problem I had was one of the senders in one of the gas tanks uh, got a bit sticky. Uh, it was possible to take the sender off the tank and uh, unstick it. Uh, it's a few years ago now, I can't remember what the problem was, but it uh, seems to fix it. So really the two main things can go wrong with LPG are just the injectors and the vaporizer, and particularly the vaporizer diaphragm. Um, neither particularly difficult to fix. So have a go, do it yourself, save yourself a fortune. Uh, if you don't fancy taking it to a garage, or pass on the tips to a garage if you do. They probably uh, also know uh, the common failures of these things. Um, I'm hoping that they've improved the design of these things over the years. Uh, but just look basically the same when I look at pictures of the new ones. So anyhow, that's how to keep it running. And that's how to fix the two common problems with this OMVL Dream 21N LPG system. Good luck with fixing yours. Thanks for watching. Bye.